Hi, everyone. This is Coach DeMarco with another Get Better Basketball Live. And today my guest is Kyle Elmendorf from Lead Em Up. Kyle, I'm really excited to have you join us today. Yeah, Coach, uh, thank you for the invitation. Can't be uh, you know, more excited to do this and jump on with you today and uh, appreciate your time. Yeah, and I'm really excited to have Kyle here today because he's going to talk about um, creating and building a successful culture um, in your program, which I think is a great topic for any coach. Um, there's going to be a lot of great information for you to learn from Kyle. Uh, but first, um, Kyle, if I could just ask you, can you give me a little background for coaches out there on Lead 'em Up and maybe on your role within the uh, company and then maybe transition into uh, your presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, John. Um, Lead 'em Up, if, if you haven't heard of us before, we're a company that exists to help coaches build winning programs. And, and we do that by helping them transform their leaders, uh, their players into the leaders needed to win. So what we see a lot of the times is coaches have so much stacked on their plate and they want to teach leadership. Uh, they want to teach character, but they might not have the resources or the time. Um, and so what we do is we have a pretty dynamic digital subscription. And when coaches um, become members of Lead Em Up, they get access to all of our um, library of, of exercises and resources, and then they're able to take that and utilize it with their team. Um, and so we do live training as well with regional coaches. And now um, we'll talk a little bit later on, but we're in to some virtual meetings here with uh, the sports shutdown that we're in. But uh, yeah, we're here to help serve coaches and to help them build the leaders in their programs that they want to see. All right, that's awesome, Kyle. Thanks so much for sharing that. So if you want to jump into your uh, presentation, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what you have to offer for coaches and might have Absolutely. a few questions along the way because uh, I'm, I'm still learning and trying to get better as a coach every day too. So Yeah, looking forward to it. Feel free to chime in anytime. So if you can see my handles down there, if anyone has any questions or wants to stay in contact, please reach out to me um, on any social media platform. I'm at K Elmendorf or um, Kyle at leademup.com. So I, I'd love to send you anything I can to help you and your players out. Um, so let's jump into it, uh, creating a winning culture. And these are things that I've found to be true in my experience of, of coaching. I've coached for 15 years. Um, boys and girls, freshman JV, varsity head coach, all along the ranks. So um, one thing we believe in here at Lead Em Up is that culture is going to exist, but it's going to come from two ways, by default or by design. And one of the things that we're always, you know, speaking to is that you have to be careful who's around your program and who has influence. Um, because if we're not careful, you know, that, that culture can shift pretty quickly. And one of the things that we, we talk about quite a bit is being green or being money, and, and we'll get to that later on. But we want to create a culture by design. And for us as coaches, it's our responsibility to take that uh, and kind of run with that and give, give players kind of the framework for that. So as we go along, one of the things that we see is that success is found in what you do, and that comes from a positive mindset. So the first way that we want to look at creating that positive culture and the winning culture is the mindset. And so the three things that I think we can hit on there are where we focus our time. Um, what are we listening to? What are we watching? What's going into that? Um, what's the directional focus for our program? Uh, and then I think it speaks to the energy that we bring each and every single day. And then that carries on. If I have energy, my players are going to be more enthusiastic to come to practice. Um, and so the great cultures, players want to be there. Um, you see a high success rate of players starting through freshman through senior year. Um, so, again, if the focus is there at the beginning of putting it on that, of having a high energy, creating an th enthusiastic environment, um, then we're going to be on the right track with that. So a couple of things that, that we say here, one of the, the quotes that we really live by is teams can be special because when we're aligned to looking to lifting each other up, we're going to create that special team. So what we try to get um, as an emphasis is making sure that coaches connect with players and when they do that to lift them up individually and then players then take that and run with that themselves 
Um, so that's one of the keys that we're looking at with that. And one of the next things here is a specific exercise to do that. So again, a lot of the times what I've tried to do is come up with specific things that coaches can take away to implement um, and not just theory or talk. So an exercise that you can do with your team is called Me, We, You. Um, it's one of the early pillars here in Lead Em Up. And so what we'll do is have a couple volunteers each week and they'll start a session. Or This is the way I like to run my session is have two players come up and they're going to speak on something from this past week that they're proud of themselves for. That's the me part. Um, the we part is collectively. Like, what have we done this past week as a unit, as a program or a specific team that I'm proud of? And then the last one is really my favorite as a coach is the you part. Um, and because you really see someone light up when a teammate is standing in front of everybody and they call out someone specifically and highlight what they've done positively this past week. Uh, and for me, that's one of the great things I always look for is just that kid reacting when their teammates praising them. And so that goes into creating a culture of celebration and a culture of positivity. So me, we, you is a great simple little exercise that goes a long way into creating that culture. Coach, if I am um, just thinking about the, this activity that you do with your teams to build a positive culture, but going back to the last slide too and thinking about uh, the focus, um, what advice do you have for coaches out there? Because there's so many distractions um, that can happen among the program. It could be things in, inside the program, but also external factors. And thinking about coaches that might be new to a program and really trying to get them to focus on what's most important. So what advice do you typically give to coaches to help them with that, that focus? Because that seems like a really important piece. Yeah, that's a great question, John. Um, going back, even looking at myself when I first started out, you know, 15, 16 years ago, I would say focus on, on the kids first. Um, focus on relationships first. Because there is a lot of external pressure for winning. Um, you know, especially in, in small towns um, or programs that are larger that have had success before. But, you know, it, it's cliche, but it's cliche, but it, because it's true it is people don't care unless they know you do. So I would say the focus has to be on relationships first. Um, and that's going to come up here in a couple other slides that we talk about. Um, but the people, one of the one of the great things that our founder, Adam Bradley, says that I love to, to say as well is, build the people and then the people will build your team. Uh, and it's simple, but it, it's so profound because when you do do that, things tend to take care of themselves. And then you can focus on, you know, schemes or philosophies on offense, defense, whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, build the people first is what I would focus on. Thank, thanks coach. I, I appreciate that. And especially uh, the idea behind it with relationships, which I know you're going to talk more about later and, also, just the idea of building your, your players up because, um, you know, I think we've all probably had programs that, um, or at least I can speak for myself, I came into a program with a pretty toxic culture when I took over, and I really did have to focus on that first, so I, I can appreciate you saying that. No, yeah, great question. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, so it's uh, point two here. Uh, second way is discipline. Um, so I kind of come from a football background in a sense, and then basketball has been, you know, side and side by that is, you know, a lot of times people have always thought that outside the coaching ranks, you know, kids hear the word discipline and automatically think it's a bad thing. Um, but I am a big believer in our kids today, a big proponent of them. Um, you know, I still teach to this day uh, and coach as well on the side and through lead them up. But one of the things that I found to be true in is that kids still want to learn today. They want to get better. They're, they're not lazy. They're not apathetic. Like they get a bad rap for. So with that, I think it's our job to provide them the framework. And that's really what we got to look at discipline is as a framework here. And so the first key to that is the standards. Um, and I believe that we should look at it through a way of the standards aren't rules. You only need a couple standards that are going to guide your program. Um, and you can, you know, apply that back to it. But once we understand the four, five key values or standards that you want to have in your program, that's going to drive the behavior of your athletes. 
their behavior is then going to show up in the results, whatever you're measuring that success in. So with that, we want to focus back to the standards. And one of the things that we have in our exercises that we try to teach kids here is being detail oriented um, in everything that we do. So it could be from making your bed in the morning, how you address an adult, um, how you respond back to your peers, the way you talk to um, other individuals in just conversation. And so if you can be a detail oriented person, then that's going to show up in your habits in the field. So we've got to make sure that our players understand that the small things really matter. Um, and when you look at any program, high school, collegiately or professionally, the ones that win on a big level and that win consistently are the ones that pay attention to the details um, and, and they don't leave any stone unturned there. So um, kind of going back here to the next one is one of our exercises is toiletry bag. And so with toiletry bag, what we do is we bring this in to the athletes. We'll show them some images on the screen of players arriving before a game. And, and we'll ask them, you know, what's in common with all these athletes? And as soon as they see about four or five different images, they'll start to pick up on the bag. And what's in the bag here speaks to how they present themselves each day. And it's a great kind of analogy. And kids really, you know, pick up on this. And they'll start incorporating it into their daily language which is a, is a key indicator of, su of success for you as a coach. And if you can start to pick up on conversations and the kids are using the phrasing that you, you're kind of attaching to these values, then you know that they've got it. So you can kind of look at the graphic here a little bit. Like, for example, you see the toothbrush. So if we have someone that is constantly just cursing, foul mouth all the time, can't get a sentence in without cussing, like, hey, you need tooth, you know, toothpaste, you need to clean your mouth up, right? Or you can talk about, um, you know, with sanitizer, we, we've got other things in there where um, in this detailed grab bag, we're specifically mentioning different topics here that are going to bring that out. So like Q-tips are another example that you might see there is if I'm a coach and I'm trying to address a topic or teach a concept to you, and I don't feel like you're listening, I'm gonna say, hey, get the Q-tips out, you need to clean your ears out. You know, simple things like that. And so, um, you, know, you know, another quick example would be vitamins. We'll, we'll bring out a, a jar of vitamins, we'll set it on the desk, and we'll say that because, you know, going back to what we just said before with positivity is, are you uplifting people? Are you, are you a shot of vitamin C to other people that you're around? Are you, are you bringing value to the room or are you taking away from it? Um, and so these are, are great ways to remind our players to be a little bit more detail oriented. And when we show them these little examples, it sticks in their mind. Um, so that's one of the things that we wanna do is make these things memorable for them, make it sticky um, and it's easy for them to digest. So that's uh, point number two there. I think the next one um, can't be understated enough. It is respect and love. So I won't go through and read the quotes here or anything like that, but any successful program has got to be built on that foundation of love and respect. And a lot of this goes back, and in, in some of the older coaches probably agree with me, is, is Coach Wooden has been a tremendous influence on my life. Um, and then the influence he's had on all these people today. but think about this is like you could have a season that's 24 and 0 and you win a state championship but at the end of it if, if the relationships and the respect and the love isn't there was it really that much of the success in the long run some coaches might be out there right now that are listening to this and I'm like I'll, I'll never win a state championship where I'm at and I came from a school like that to where I spent you know, 13, 14 years, and we won one district championship. And it was going to be hard-pressed to win that. But when you look at getting a, a note from someone that said, you taught me so much, thank, thank you for everything that you did, or I, I wouldn't be where I am without you, that speaks to, you know, a successful culture. And so this past year, one of the things I, that I took from the football season hearing Trevor Lawrence say after they beat Ohio State um, to go to the national championship was asked, him, why is Clemson so successful? You know, what makes that a great program? And I think for any coach, what we do is, is we study people, not just in basketball,
but study those that are great in football. Um, study those that are great in hockey and soccer and see what we can learn from them. And, and Clemson has a culture that it's built on love and respect. And, and when that is present, then you, you attract top-notch talent. Um, but it's not there because uh, of a lack of love and care for one another. So uh, what, what, can, um, what can we do, you know, as coaches, there's a lot of coaches that are going to be watching this and there's so much great information. And what, what pointer would you have for coaches and, you know, in order to kind of model that to their players, what are some suggestions or ideas or really things that have worked well for you as a coach, because you've been doing this for such a long time, um, you know, to model that love and respect to your players. Simple things that, that really stood out to me that I remember when I was a player that, I, that I've tried to do with every team that I've coached is write them letters. And so each year at Christmas, um, I'll give them a, try to find out what their favorite candy is. And I'll, I'll hand write them a Christmas card and give them that, you know, a little piece of the candy bar or something at Christmas time. Um, at the beginning of the year after they've made the team, I'll just write a congratulation note and give that to them. And then at the end of the year, I really take time to sit down and write each player a handwritten note that thanks them for the, you know, the value that they brought to the team, but for their effort, for choosing to be there every single day and for trusting me as their coach. And, you know, really just trying to affirm them as individuals more than the player. I would always tell them that, you know, who you are as a person is more important than a player, but how do they know that? They don't know that unless I write them those letters. Um, I would have two sit-down meetings with each player throughout the course of the season. And really what it wasn't based on on the court performance. It was just like, how are things going? Um, you know, what can I help you with? Those type of things. And, you know, other things I think coaches can do too is um, I would do a thankful Thursday note. And so each week I would just find an image. Um, could be a, a kid that doesn't have shoes. Um, it could be someone that doesn't have a, a great school setting that they're in and just simple reminders of what they can be thankful for. And then at the end of each note, I would say, I'm thankful to be your coach. So uh, that just kind of goes a long way. It's, it's simple little things like that into building up a level of trust with your players um that they know that it's not just about sports that you're there for them and another just simple thing for those that teach in a building i think is being visible in the hallway in between classes and when players would walk by just give them a high five or saying what's up or having an inside joke with them um, as they walk by but make it more than just the game and just that coach player relationship. Let them see you um, as someone that's in their corner as, as, as an advocate for that person. I love those ideas. Uh, we, we always did an appreciation Friday um, and we did some of the things similar to what, what you're talking about and the face-to-face -face meetings I think are, are so important. And you know, what I'm hearing in that is that you're showing your players that you have their back and that you're building that connection with them and, I'm just looking at the next slide, have your teammates yeah. back. So I think that's a nice, nice segue into uh, the, the next piece there. Absolutely. So that's what we can do as coaches. Um, and what we want to do too is obviously we want to model that, but then we want to transfer the ownership to the athletes because we all know that the best programs are the ones that are player led. And so I can do my part by modeling this for the players. And now what we can do here is through what we have is called the six. And I'm not sure, some people I'm sure are familiar, maybe not all, but in the military, they have a saying called, I've got your six. And essentially, I mean, six o'clock, I've got your back. And so what we do here with this exercise is we partner teammates up who, pro and I would advise, do this and make sure these players aren't already tight. They're not great friends or, you know, they're not already the best of teammates. It's a way for them to build relationships on the team. And we see so many great stories that come out of this, but now this is where the players start to transfer the love and respect from the coach and the player to now players amongst themselves. And this is when you really get that family sense of unity. Um, so coaches can be creative with this. We encourage them, you know, anything that you might already do in your program, this would be a great way to just partner people up and to help them hold each other accountable 
to what you want to have in your program. You know, it could be checking each other on grades, making sure they're on the bus schedule on time, they don't forget their shoes, whatever the case may be, um, but it can go much deeper than that. So it's a great exercise to kind of build in that respect and love throughout the program. So hopefully, you know, if coaches have anything on that, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'd love to give you some more ideas. Um, and it kind of goes into our next thing is trust and care, kind of building off of what we said is, the next core things is that level of trust because it's going to start to come. Um, and, and when that does, that's when the program starts to take that next step. Uh, and a couple of things that we're going to look at here and what we can do is we know as coaches, it's going to make or break our team um, in basketball and football, whatever the case may be. But if I don't trust the person that's, but you know, if I'm the point guard and I'm the top of the defense and my job is to hound the ball as soon as it crosses half court. If I don't trust that my teammate has got my help, I can't guard the ball as well as I should or as well as my coach wants me to. And those things off the court come onto the court more than, than what we think. And so what we want to try to do is, you know, through other things besides just drilling it is how do we intentionally continue to build that up? So, one thing as coaches I think that we can do teaching wise is be specific and this could be on the court stuff or off but let's just talk on the court for ex, you know example if if I'm installing a one three one defense and I think we can fall into a trap a lot of the times of of saying we have so much to put in early in the season that we just say hey this is where these people need to be but I'm not specific in what their role is on that defense and I've seen it before, and I've been a part of teams before to where we didn't teach it that well, and we weren't specific in what that player's role was. And then we get to midseason, and we're just like, we're, we're not good at this. We just need to scrap it. Well, we, we don't need to scrap it. We need to go back to teaching it. Um, what do I need to do on the weak side when the ball's away from me? Obviously, we all need that. We need to drop, whatever the case may be. But – I think just being specific with our language and being direct in it instead of talking circles around our kid, just be direct. And that kind of goes into being intentional in everything that we do. Don't put anything on the practice schedule that doesn't have intentional meaning to what your core philosophy is. Um, one of the things that's more true, I think today than ever is our kids today can see through fluff. They can kind of see through nonsense um, because you know, there's, they, they have so much at their disposal. They know what's real and what's not. So be intentional with our practice schedule. Be intentional with the time that you have with them and let them know that. Like, hey, I'm going to respect your time. And in order to do that, I need you to be locked in on me. And then I think the third thing that we can all model is integrity. And, you know, and so what I mean by that is building trust in the program goes a long way in the building and how you deal with people while practice is not in session or the game's not taking place. How do you interact with the custodian going down the hallway when your team's following you to the locker room or to the weight room? What do you say to the teacher that um, is there working late and you happen to pass them by in the hall? Do you just turn your head, not look at them, or do you greet them, ask them how they're doing? Do we pick up after ourselves in the locker room? Do we leave it better than we left? I think all those things play into role. And for us as coaches, we're in a fishbowl. Kids are always looking at us. And so I think we just have to continually kind of walk the walk. And when we do that, um, they will trust us. And when they trust us, our players are going to care about being a member of this program. And when they care about being a member of the program, they're going to go above and beyond of what they would for somebody else. Um, so that's kind of what we have there for, for building up um, a level of trust. Kyle, can I just ask, um, this comes up a lot when I, when I talk to coaches. Um, and, you know, I, I love the specific examples you gave about building trust with your players in the program. And I know a huge part of what you do, just developing leaders in the program. But I think one of the areas that coaches struggle with in terms of building that trust is with uh, families and with parents. And, what what have you done in your career, um, you know, because we've all seen it, you know, you might have a good relationship with the players, but sometimes 
the parents might ha come in and there could be an impact that could, you know, trickle down to the players and even their own child in the program. So what advice do you have um, for coaches to help them develop that trust also, you know, not just in the school and with the players, but also with their families? Yeah, that, that's another great question. I appreciate you asking that. Um, I'm going to have to make sure I put that into the presentation. That, that's a great one. I would say over-communicate. One of the worst things that I've heard someone say is don't hold the parent meeting. I would hold a parent meeting at the very beginning of the season. And in that parent meeting, give them a letter, but then go over, have a, a built-in presentation, lay it all out there on the line. Um, and I think if, if you can speak to what your heart is behind your program's mission, what, what the vision is behind you want to build and what you want to stand for, parents are going to understand. Uh, you know, basketball, we're in a, it's a different beast in basketball because there's only five spots out there. And I think if you can convey early on to them that this is what we're looking at, this is maybe the style that we're going to play, um, I welcome, I would encourage, you know, not many parents ever do, but I would always encourage coaches to offer the invitation, come watch practice. You know, why should it be closed? If, if we have everything out there, people can see that. Now, most people won't take you up on that offer, but I think just being willing to be transparent there is another way that, that builds up that trust. So the other thing that I would do is, that, again, coaches are stressed on time. So maybe if you don't have time to do this, I would get a manager on your team that will do it. Give them an academic letter, um, buy them dinner, whatever the case may be. But have someone that manages your social media accounts and over-communicate and over-celebrate what you want to see in your program. Um, because schools will do that for you, but no one's going to tell your story like you will. And not only should you have one for yourself, but I would, this is a, this is another presentation I have on great coaches. And this kind of goes to that is I would start a website. I would start a blog or I would do what you're doing, John, and I would start a YouTube channel. And again, um, coaches might say, well, I don't have the time. And a quick fix to that is, is talk to the technology teacher or someone that might, if you have a video communications course in your, in your school, get students that need a project and have them have the Coach DeMarco show where they just come in and interview you and they do all the work and they put it out there. And then now you can put that up on your Twitter handle. You can share on Instagram or YouTube or whatever the case may be. But I would constantly share my message of who I am as a coach and over communicate that so people know what you stand for and there's no kind of gray area and then just make it known that you'll meet with anybody anytime except for after a game <laughs> and, and be willing to have that open door policy and just be honest I think the more that you communicate from the very beginning it's going to save you a lot of headaches in the long run yeah thank you Kyle. hey I really appreciate that Kyle because uh, that comes up a lot and you gave coaches a ton of great suggestions um, in terms of managing that part of the program. So uh, thanks for all those great ideas. No, well, my pleasure. Uh, hopefully I can help someone. So uh, one of the, quickly here, uh, another dynamite exercise to build trust is called going for the goal. And so what we do here is we partner teammates up. Again, ideally it's not people that are already tight. Um, people that might not know each other that well. And we get them going and we get them talking about things that they may have in common. So if you and I are doing this together, one of the things that we might start with is just talking about, you know, what do you like or what do you have? And so when this happens is we're in a competition with everybody else in the room. So we've got, let's say we're just on a basketball team. We've got 12 people on our team. We've got six groups spread them throughout the classroom and we give them two minutes for the first round and we call it going for the gold because what we're trying to do is we're trying to find nuggets golden nuggets of, of connection that you and i didn't know we had in common and so we can say like i have a pet and you're like oh i have a pet too oh well, what's your dog's name oh my i have a beagle oh you have a beagle that's great and then as soon as we have that connection we clap twice and so when the clapping occurs, it's kind of like a key to everyone else that connections are being made. And now you and I are trying to lock in on, on one another. And so it kind of levels up from there. 
Uh, but it's a great exercise that really gets um, teammates digging for those connections. And because I, I think it, it just goes back to the relationship piece, and we can't state it enough, is when a team is connected and when they care about everybody on the team, from the starter to the person that never gets in, if they're all connected, then they're willing to fight more for each other. And it becomes truly about what's on the front of the jersey and not what's on the back of it. Um, and that's what we're just trying to build is – special teams that, that love each other and that care about each other. So the next thing is work ethic. Um, and what we want to say is be the 1% uh, because, it, you know, it's, it's uncommon to find that in a lot of people today. And, and athletes want to see that. So how do we develop the desire to be elite? It goes back first to the standards. Um, what are you teaching? What, what are the standards that you're being measured and how are you going to acknowledge that? <clears throat> so the next thing is, is another phrase I steal from Adam all the time, our founder, is that which gets praised gets repeated. So it kind of goes back to the mindset book and to the whole growth mindset. And I try to do this with my own boys more than anything else is in school, out of school is praise effort. Um, praise the desire and if, if a kid messes up especially that's tough let's start early in the season so let's say we're at tryouts first week of tryouts or maybe even the week after and you're doing some ball handling drills and you're trying to level it up a little bit kid bounces it off and it goes against the bleachers they put their head down what we want to do is just hey that's great you know a mistake is a good thing because it means you're getting better if you're doing it really easy how are we getting any better? So I think praising like the signs of success, even though it might look like failure to the athlete, praising that is going to make the desire increase to get better. You know, is a kid showing up to the weight room or the off season program? Praise them, send them a text, um, send them something on social media or spotlight them. And then as a coach, I have to have passion. I, I don't want to play for somebody that, you know, comes in, walks into the gym at three o'clock, and it's just like, all right, uh, we're going to do a little bit of offense and defense. Why don't you guys shoot for about 15 minutes, and I'm going to make some phone calls, and then we'll get into it. No one wants to play for that. So I've got to, I got to have passion. And I think being a teacher, what I found is you can be drained at the end of the day. Um, there's a lot of coaches that are probably listening to this that don't have a plan, that teach from, seven, eight in the morning till three o'clock till practice starts and they've got 10 minutes to get to practice and get the ball going. I would just encourage you, if it even means starting practice five minutes later, is when you're getting changed, just take a couple minutes to just sit there and like take a couple deep breaths and think about what you want to do at practice today and what type of vibe or energy you want to have. And then make sure and remind myself, I've had to do this before, is like, Yesterday, I wasn't as good as I wanted to be, so today I need to be more energetic. And the first thing to do with that is to go out and just get touch points with your, with your team. And, you know, just fist bump. You know, I know we're talking in the era right now, we're social distancing and all that, but once we get back to normalcy, it doesn't have to be a long embrace or anything. We've got a simple, maybe you're just touching elbows at this point or a head nod gesture, but like interacting and asking them how they're doing and say, let's get it today and be that passionate person. And then the other thing is every, everything should be competition based. It is, you know, people, you want people that want to compete. If they don't want to compete, they probably shouldn't be a part of your program. So every drill should have a competition component to it to where there's a winner and a loser. If you lose, it doesn't mean that you're a loser. It just means get back at it, get better next time and praise them for their effort. So I think those four things go a long way into uh, developing desire in your players to be that 1%. Kyle, I just, um, I have a couple of questions here, and you made so many great points. Um, I, there's a lot that comes to mind here as a coach. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking about uh, the praise piece and how you gave some great examples of opportunities to praise your players. And I'm, I'm wondering um, if you see the impact that, you know, that has on the players, like when you start to do that, how long does it take or when does it start to happen for players to start doing that for one another? Cause I'm thinking about the leadership and 
how you guys yeah. have a leadership capacity. So do you notice pretty early on in the season that players start saying to each other, hey, great effort and great job? And, you know, do you see that, you know, as a result? Absolutely. And I think you'd be surprised at how quickly that starts to take shape. Because what you can do to, to further enhance that is – You'll notice right away sometimes when you're praising an effort for someone making a mistake and just saying, hey, I'm, I'm glad you're here. You're getting better today. You could have been somewhere else, but you're here getting better. That mistake is getting you better. And then what you'll see is like they're kind of like looking at you sometimes in a way like you're not going to chew me out. You're not going to make me run a lap. Like I've had players say before, you're not going to make us run for that. I'm like, no, why would I make you run when you're trying to get better? Like, you know, so – when they start to see that, then they'll notice that. And like you said, what you can do to help foster that to where they're doing it to other teammates is praise them for praising their teammates. Like I think a lot of times you can end a drill real quickly, bring the team in together, and then say, hey, I noticed in that drill, John, you did a great job. Way, way to you know persevere through that. And then Sam, I noticed how you encouraged him. That's a great example of being the type of teammate that we want to have in our program. And so you, you've highlighted two things right there, the effort and then being a great teammate, and everyone sees that. And so it's not for John making, you know, 10 shots in a row. It's because of his effort. It's because of Sam. So when they see what you're praising other people for doing, they'll want to, to, to do that more themselves. And so then once you start doing that, the key is just to be consistent in it. I was thinking of my, uh, you know, I have three kids at three years old and <laughs> under right now. so. We have a very young family, and I think about my son who's uh, trying to do things on his own and ride his bike, and he falls down, and, hey, great great try, great effort. And how just the, the advice you're giving translates beyond basketball and football and coaching, and it's really about, you know, being a great leader even outside of that. So um, the yeah. other question I have is, uh, and this is a tough one, um, thinking about passion, um, I'm, I'm a pretty enthusiastic person, if you can't tell, and I can tell that you are as well, Kyle. But what about those coaches? Maybe it's a young coach or maybe it's a, a veteran coach, but they're, they're not as enthusiastic. They're not as passionate or as comfortable. Um, so what, what advice do you have um, for them or suggestions where they can maybe demonstrate some enthusiasm, but, you know, it might look different than, you know, me diving on the floor for a loose ball in practice and getting all excited with my players. And, um, you know, what, what advice do you have for those types of coaches? Because I'm sure – you must work with some people that, you know, they have a tough time maybe showing that enthusiasm. They're a little more reserved. Yeah, that, that's a great point because not everyone is is vocal or is loud, and they, they show that through other means. So my, my advice on that would be to really sit and reflect on to what gets you most excited or why you're still coaching. And that could be something to where you might be more of the technician to where you're focusing on technique or fundamentals. Um, maybe you like film study and you're technologically savvy. Put together some highlight reels for players and surprise it with them. And then just be – and you don't have to be, like, up in front, but maybe you surprise the team one day with a, a cool highlight clip you put together. Or um, another thing I think is just really opening up and being honest to people. Uh, whether it's assistant coaches or players, it's just sharing some personal stories that you think might help them out or that relates to maybe something your team's going through that, at that point. If you know, I'm a veteran coach, players don't necessarily want to hear about me when I played because that, that time has passed. But I think they're interested to hear about athletes who I may have coached or have been in a similar situation. So kind of speaking to things that uh, you think could help them out. But I think passion can look, like you said, it can look many different ways to different people, but knowing what gets you excited about coaching and then just taking that and finding your own way to express that to other people. Thanks. So. I, uh, I appreciate that. I know that's, that's a tough, that's a tough question. And I'm, I'm thinking of one more thing. There's so many great points here. I could ask a million questions. I promise. Yeah, go for it. Uh, thinking about competition and, um, you know, one of the things that I got back from players and feedback my first year taking over a program that had a, a pretty tough culture, as I said, was when they were competing with each other and, and we really brought that to the table and we really wanted them to get after it. 
was the struggle for them to then interact outside of basketball at times or even right after practice because they were so they went after it so hard with each other so we had to be creative in how we explained to them and demonstrated and also did some team building around it's okay to compete and then love each other afterwards and pick each other up so what advice do you have for coaches because I know this comes up a lot you know you're having these highly competitive practices but you also want your players to be supportive of each other. So how do you balance that out? Um, you know, or just maybe one suggestion you would have for coaches to, to balance that out. Yeah, I think just simply taking the time to address it sometimes, because again, we, I, I found myself doing that at you know, different points in my career is just when practice was ending, not taking the time to just pause and maybe speak to that and, you know, pray, I would, think to myself right now, if I had a practice like that, what would I want to do or how would I want to end it? And again, I would go back to just say, hey, that was an awesome practice today. That is exactly what this program stands for. But it kind of, I would tie it back to some of the exercises we already mentioned, but other themes that I've hit on throughout the year and just kind of reiterate to them is, you know, fellows or ladies, this is who we are. We're competitive. And this is going to be harder than the game. I would, I would kind of reiterate that to them is this practice is going to be harder than what you just, what you're going to see on Friday night. And what we can know with confidence is that you're making each other better here and you're having each other's back by making each other better in practice. But now once we step off the court, we're back to being each other's biggest cheerleader. And when we walk in that locker room, we're walking in that locker room as one. And when we come out on Friday, we're, we're coming out as one, knowing that they can't give us the same intensity that you gave each other the other day in practice. So that would be something that I would just try to quickly address and remind them of constantly is that they're here to get better and make each other better. That's awesome. That's great advice on all those points. And like I said, a lot of questions that come to mind, and I think it just really speaks to uh your 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 organiz you as a coach and your organization lead them up and what you guys can offer for coaches because I know we're just like at the tip of the iceberg you guys have so many great ideas and so much to share so I, I appreciate you um you know offering up some of those uh some of those additional ideas. Yeah I could talk this all day long. I love just talking, you know, ball and coaching with, with people and, and really have a passion for it. Like 